which of these three layer ones is most interesting right now? We have ICP, we have Solana, and we have SUI, right? That's what we're comparing today. Lots going on across a whole bunch of different metrics for each of these assets. SUI is winning the short-term price game. Over the last one month, SUI's up 75%. Solana, over the last month, only up 2%. ICP, over the last month, is up 7%, right? So what does this speak to? The earlier stage, more undiscovered assets, tend to outperform, right? Because smaller market cap, less money required to move the price. SUI is winning though. There's lots going on behind the scenes with this asset. Let's talk about it. We have the total value locked of SUI hitting $800 million, doubling from $350 million in August, right? So this is kind of the narrative. Money is flowing into SUI. It's kind of the new kid on the block. The crypto matrix seems to be talking about it a lot at all these different crypto conferences like Token 2049. It's kind of like this exciting new trade. What is SUI? Again, it's a really fast layer one blockchain. They're pumping the total value locked, but this is what's really going on with total value locked. Ethereum has 56% of the total value locked across all chains that DeFi Llama covers. Solana, 6%, and SUI at only 1%. It's a lot easier to grow your total value locked when you don't have that much. But obviously that is impressive growth, but this is the big game. Based purely on total value locked, Solana is still massively in the lead. Now, this is the bull case for SUI. Talking of the tech stack, the Mississetti upgrade bought sub one second finality, fastest of all chains. And the coming pilot fish will supposedly bring transactions per second that scales even beyond Solana Fire Dancer, which is supposed to bring a million transactions per second. But what are SUI slash Mister trying to achieve? Basically, they're trying to rebuild the internet. Brick by brick for Web3. It is built to scale to Facebook slash meta size use cases. From ZK logins, the upcoming Walrus decentralized storage protocol. But again, it's still early. So a lot of this is hype, right? Because ICP has already solved these problems. They've already solved the decentralized storage protocol. They've already solved scalability. They've already solved decentralized compute attached to a blockchain. They've already created a world computer. Right. And here's some other recent news. SUI has partnered with MoviePass, right, which is apparently still around. So not the biggest partnership in the world. But in a nutshell, that's where SUI is, right? Decent technology, scalable layer one blockchain, has the crypto matrix talking about it, seems to be kind of the trendy asset to talk about. Maybe if we're about to enter a crypto bull run, it does outperform in the short term. So that's SUI, right? We're going to talk about how ICP beats SUI on the technological front. But now let's talk about Solana. They just had their Breakpoint Solana conference, which sold out. Over 6,000 people attended this conference, right? In one week, we just got this news dropped. Franklin Templeton Citigroup turned to Solana for next-gen financial services. Franklin Templeton plans to launch a mutual fund natively on Solana, while well, Citi is exploring Solana's capabilities for smart contracts and cross-border money transfers, right? Massive adoption by big organizations. SUI doesn't have that. The institutions are coming and they're building on Solana. Breakpoint day one highlights Franklin Templeton, Securitize, Societe Generale, Forge, and City. We talked about City and Franklin Templeton. What about Securitize? Well, Securitize announces 47 million strategic funding round led by BlackRock, right? So big institutions adopting Solana at this stage, right? And then we have Societe Generale, a massive bank over in Europe. Sockgen's crypto unit takes Euro stablecoin to Solana after flopping on Ethereum. Very, very interesting. Network effects building on Solana. Then we have Bitwise, which is angling for a Solana ETF. They launched a massive ETF for Bitcoin. They've created an Ethereum fund. Now they're angling for that Solana ETF, right? Well, this is their research. It's obviously a multi-billion dollar firm at this point, right? And they put money behind the research. Why you can't ignore Solana? Helium is a decentralized mobile carrier powered by users. The latest stats, 100,000 plus subscribers, 18,000 plus hotspots, 5G, 5G service nationwide, $20 a month, and it's built on Solana. That's just one project building on Solana. Decentralized physical infrastructure. That's what we're talking about here. Here's another decentralized physical infrastructure asset. Hive Mapper, the crowdsourced Google Maps competitor, built on Solana, is now used by two of the 10 largest map makers in the world. Because 
outsourcing and decentralizing map making makes a lot of sense, right? So we have two powerhouse revolutionary breakthrough deep pin assets building on Solana. Here's some more top 10 deep pin projects by market cap on Solana. We have Render, Render Network, Decentralized Cloud Computing. We have Helium, we just talked about. We have Ionet, Decentralized Cloud Computing. We have Hive Mapper, Decentralized Map Making. Nosana, Decentralized Cloud Computer, Helium Mobile. Big projects are building on Solana. Again, Solana beats SUI on almost every level in terms of network effects, in terms of adoption. So does the world really need another ultra fast layer one competitor to Solana when Solana is already massively undervalued relative to SUI? Its market cap is only five plus times higher than that of SUI and its network effects are like a hundred times higher than that of SUI. Right? So right there, I think Solana beats SUI. Where does ICP come in? Right? Because yes, it is nowhere near the network effects of Solana. But what is Solana trying with all its power to do? Get to a million transactions per second. What is ICP already doing today? 1.7 million Ethereum equivalent transactions per second. They're already beating SUI technologically wise. They're already beating Solana technologically wise. And they're pushing through Solana's dream amount of transactions, right? Now, how are they able to do this with seemingly less adoption, right? Because they're a world computer. So the fact that they're able to run applications that I, that Solana could never dream of running, like an entire social network on chain, decentralized computing attached to the blockchain, websites attached to the blockchain. It costs tens of thousands of dollars to put a picture on the Solana blockchain. This is how ICP can be pushing through so many more transactions in Solana because it has way more computational power right? So even though its network effects aren't quite as big as Solana yet, yes, we have the United Nations building on it. We have progress, but even though its network effects aren't as big, it can still push through way more transactions. Why does that matter? Because ICP has a deflationary model. The more it's used, the more deflationary it gets. The ICP token is now slightly deflationary. Cycle burning has gone through the roof, right? This Again, this is from essentially one project building on it. That's why the technology matters because the more computationally intensive and powerful it is, the more deflationary this asset becomes because the more work it can perform. Even though we have big organizations like the United Nations building on it, we have Bitcoin layer twos, we have Bob, the build on blockchain building on it. We don't have quite the network effects, but it really won't necessarily matter for the price appreciation of ICP. And what happens if we do get massive network effects, bigger organizations than the UN building on it, right? So it's more early stage than SUI. It has better technology than SUI. It has better technology than Solana. And it's already deflationary. The internet computer is soaking up relentless and eye-popping growth right now. Remember the world computer vision from 2014, ICP is currently doing one and a half million Ethereum equivalent transactions per second. So cycle burns measure how deflationary ICP is. Remember, the more it's used, in order to use ICP as a developer, you have to burn ICP, right? So let's take a look at the on-chain fundamentals of ICP. Again, a very transparent ecosystem. Over the last month, look at the cycle burn rate. It skyrocketed and it's going higher. I did a video last week. It had already skyrocketed. It's going even higher. So that's where this space gets very, very, very interesting. Yes, we have massive network effects on Solana. That's most likely not going to change. It has much more upside. ICP probably has even more upside because its market cap is 20 times smaller than that of Solana, but its deflationary mechanism could cause massive upward buying pressure on this asset as ICP gets scarcer and scarcer. And that's going to attract more and more partnerships, more and more capital, more and more network effects. So nothing against Solana from an investment perspective. It pays passive income, but it's a long way away to getting deflationary like ICP is. ICP is much more early stage and it's already deflationary. So Solana wins the network effects game. ICP wins the technology game. But we're gonna stay on top of this space because it's constantly evolving.